Welcome to the first Lightning Talk event put on by the team at Keys. Uh, the premise here is to give uh, community members a five-minute spotlight to talk about whatever they want um, in whatever medium they prefer. Um, so it could range from anywhere between project announcements to research that you've been doing or books that you've read or recipes you enjoy, essentially anything that you think the um, audience here might benefit from hearing, I guess. Um, and medium wise, you can do, I mean, presentations, you're welcome to share a screen, you're welcome to do slideshows, you're welcome to just do talks, you can sing if you want, doesn't really matter. Um, totally up to you, whatever you think you can deliver your message the best in. Uh, we're aiming to do these either weekly or bi-weekly, depending on demand, uh, which I'd love to hear from you guys on, on what, um, when you'd like to see these things happen. Uh, we will also try to constantly switch times around so people in other time zones may be able to participate. I know there were some people in um, some later time zones that wanted to get in that are sleeping right now. So um, we'll try to suit you next week. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any opinions on how we might be able to do these better moving forward, don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, we'll always have our events at Keys uh, listed in our events tab in our Discord as well, too. So that's a good spot to keep up with all the events coming out with Keys. Um, quick disclaimer, people may choose to use this time to talk about a project they're working on or something they may have invested in. Keys does not directly endorse anything brought up in these chats. And as always, uh, do your own research. Uh, today, we have eight people giving talks. Um, that being said, if you're in the crowd and feel inspired through this conversation to come up and give a talk of your own, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we have space planned at the end for any extra ones that were planned. Um, and today we have, I said eight, so we'll start off with myself as I'm the one who scheduled lightning talks. I'll set the tone here um, on what these might look like. Um, and then we got talking about Cupco, we got Heisenberg talking about token approvals. Um, we got uh, Tonto talking about Upcard. We got Carlos talking about Liquid. We got a bunch of people uh, getting ready to chat. Um, so without further ado, I will get into my presentation as well. Um, for the five minutes as well, we want to try to stick to a hard five minutes. Um, so I'll keep time on my phone and I'll stay on mute, obviously up here. I'll bring every speaker up with me. Um, but then as the five minutes comes up, I will uh, go off mute. So the timer can go off and then just try to finish up within the next like 15 to uh, maybe 30 seconds and the timer goes off so we can stay on a good on a good schedule here. Um, so let me set this timer here. Five minutes works. All right, cool. So um, again, I'm Sage. Uh, I'll be your host at these lightning talks from today onward. I've been a core contributor at Keys now for uh, over two years. Um, Look forward to giving this talk. Uh, recently, I've been researching public good funding models uh, on Ethereum and its various layer twos for a blog post that I'll be putting out uh, on Common Ground through the Keys Common Ground. Uh, recently, there has been a breakthrough for a new model that I think can be massively impactful. Uh, but how did it come to be? As we all know, public goods are absolutely necessary for daily life, both in and out of blockchain, uh, but they often lack a clear business model or path to monetization. This means their ability to raise and sustain funding for themselves is often very little. Uh, Web2 public goods can rely on funding from various sources like national, state, or local governments, or a variety of other sources such as PPPs or nonprofits, foundations, etc. Uh, as much as we might say public goods are underfunded, traditionally the routes to deliver the funding is at least there. Uh, for Web3, we don't have uh, such support. Crowdfunding naturally seemed like the best route. Not only does crowdfunding help, but it can also be done in a healthier way using this blockchain tech. With an EVM, we have the ability to reach a global audience and permissionlessly transfer value almost in an instant while relying on smart contracts to facilitate monetary transfers, all publicly available for anyone to see. This is something that could greatly improve traditional Web2 public good funding as well, but I digress. However, another problem still arises. Crowdfunding often doesn't amass the capital a project may need for long-term sustainability. 
incomes quadratic funding, a crowdfunding mechanism where the number of donations matter more than the amount donated. This enables someone like Arbitrum or Luxo or any other large scale project to offer a large pool of funds for a crowdfunding round. The round can open and a large number of small donors can vote which project they think should receive funding by allocating them some capital. Whichever project receives the most donors, not funds, donors, then triggers the quadratic funding algorithms to match the donations with funds from the larger pool, then properly distributes. Uh, this essentially enables small donors to have a large impact in a participative and democratic way. And it also enables the donor of a large pool to systematically distribute their funds as well, um, both beneficial for the donors and the public goods. This is a fantastic accomplishment, and we've seen it play out now for a couple of years through projects like Gitcoin. Uh, but another issue is present. How do we best determine which public goods are needed? Naturally, a democratic process helps, but the votes are still assuming that this new public will actually have value once it's given these funds or that a team will actually deliver on its promises once they receive them. Enter retroactive public good funding. Uh, this new model, along with quadratic funding, introduces uh, the idea that public goods should be funded retroactively, meaning after they prove that they are making an impact. The combination of this tooling creates a scenario where a small team or an individual can produce an MVP of a public demonstrate its impact, now have verifiable proof to show donors that this public good actually provides value. They can then start a QF round where instead of relying on the decision of a small group like in Web2, they can reach into a large group of small donors to ensure they will at least earn some funds. These small donors then have their contributions quadratically matched by the larger pool that was provided by the host. And these funds are then democratically distributed through smart contracts rather than individuals, assuring the money gets where it needs to go in a timely manner. Um, this is something I'm obviously extremely excited to see play out. Um, currently, it's being tested on optimism. Um, but again, um, I would love to see it on Luxo sometime soon, and I'm sure all of you guys would as well. Um, so be on the lookout for um, my blog post outlining, again, this conversation, essentially. Um, and I'll be sure to go into more detail on, um, on how we might be able to better do that on Luxo. So that's uh, the end of my talk there. We've got 20, minute, uh, 20 seconds to spare. Um, I think the best way to do questions at the end, we'll, we can save a little time to do questions at the end of each talk, too. So. Um, as the talks go on, definitely make sure to throw in questions in the chat and we can spend five minutes um, answering them. So I'll quickly run over that. Um, next up, two is Tonto. So um, Tonto, I think you're under the up card there. If you could raise your hand, um, I can get you up on stage here and I'll look through the chat real quick. Um, yes, Heisenberger. Allo is doing that. Um, that's a great interface, it's essentially like a smart contract backend uh, for facilitating all these transfers. And then you can just pop up front ends on it and, and do all sorts of cool funding rounds, which is awesome to see. Um, so let's get Tonto up here. What's up, man? How are you? Feel free to share camera if you want. If not, it's fine. Um, and I think that you should have the option to share screen. So um, I see Heisenbergers in the chat here. Florian, what's up, guys? Everybody, awesome. So um, some initiatives that I've kind of taken. Um, uh, lot, lots of, we've got a lot of stovetops on right now. But um, something about, I love hearing about the first met topic was uh, public goods funding. Um, yeah, I think if you look at like the true pure builder communities that believe in open source code and um, permissionless learning uh, that succeeded and thrived on ETH, then uh, uh, like, you know, Build Guild and Speed Run Ethereum, these types of projects are really good for teaching developers um, how to code on build permissionless dApps on EVM. Teaching the LSPs to that market would just bring more value to the ecosystem. So that's an initiative that I would like to undertake. And there's some awesome developers that just learned the LSP standards in the recent hackathon that 
I am trying to pull into a developer DAO community in Common Ground, and everyone just kind of shows up and, you know, helps contribute there. I know that we can harness a lot of horsepower in this community to do a lot of things. Um, one of which that I'm going to start rolling out via a whitelist that is circulating is uh, this is not an official Luxo project, by the way. So do your own research, uh, DGENs. But uh, this, this is a uh, lifetime Web3 domains for dot licks. So in my mind, like I've made a little video here on YouTube that I'm going to just post in the chat. Everyone should go watch this later to get an idea of um, the history of a Web3 domain. And maybe even more like, um, just kind of the evolution of like Bitcoin, Ethereum, ENS, Luxo, and what could, what, whether like, whether Luxo even needs an LNS, whether Luxo could support all web three domains, whether there's a lot of interesting questions to, to, to revisit. Cause like, if you look, if we have an L1 that supports usernames, but it doesn't support like a DNS record to route towards an A record, that's not quite what a UPN is, right? So there's a lot of interesting ways that I think this market cycle, and I'm thinking four years, like build on Luxo, what does that look like? And I think that onboards devs to also take these like ERC 725 accounts and like kind of do what we did with Updev and deploy them on other chains and mint dot licks names on other chains. I know that sounds insane, but 90% of the big whales are holding licks in the EOAs anyways. So are we building for like the $100 a month e-commerce customer who uses blockchain under the hood on his app? Absolutely. But we're also building to onboard web3.eth. So dot licks is a community name based project rolling out lifetime usernames on free name, trying to <clears throat> communicate with the team about what their plans are for the official uh, LNS. And if there's a way to use the dot licks extension um, that we use with pointer contracts for LSP eights or however we're gonna make it work. I'm the guy who helped deploy universal profiles on Polygon Mumbai for no reason other than like, that's where DeFi exists. And if you can link that back to an account that you own for life with reputation, then and it, and it brings awareness to Luxo. So that's it. I've said my piece. Like you'll probably see a slow email rollout. Um, given the name squatting that occurred on UPN, and these are domain names that can be live. And the links will probably work in common ground when you type dot licks. So there will be like Web3 SEO secretly happening. And I think Luxo would be better if we support all Web3 domains. So watch my video. Give me feedback. Tell me it's a bad idea. Um, either way, I see a future for kind of building a liquidity layer, uh, to deploy universal profiles on other chains, linking that to a domain name, deploying a website on IPFS, creating like a CMS built using universal profiles. And that's the end of my talk. Thanks guys. Great work, Tonto. That was sweet. And you beat the five minutes. I give you a little leeway at the start so you can get rolling. Um, just so everyone knows too, uh, we have a Notion page for these lightning talks in our keys Notion. Um, so I'll gather as many links as I can for everybody's talks uh, and we'll file it through there. Um, so next up, we would have the man Leadfoot, but I don't see him here. So we got Jack raising his hand who would be after him. So we will uh, throw Jack up here and let him go to town. Uh, Tonto, I'm going to, um, well, maybe I won't demote you because it's not popping up, but I'm going to demote you to the audience, but great to hear from you. Uh, I love that talk. Love hearing more about the dot licks and what you're up to. Hey, Sage, can you hear me and see my screen? I can hear you and see your screen, buddy. You let me know. Uh, when you want this five minute timer to start and I will get it going. Run it, sir. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Shout out keys for hosting lightning talks. I am here to talk about Cupco and answer the question. What is Cupco? So first off our team, it is Ari, who is our full stack dev. He does the front end. He does the back end. He does the smart contracts. And, you know, this entire effort 
you know, it did stem from his idea. Um, we met during the build up to hackathon where we created the pop protocol and we had a really good time working with each other. And then Ari started talking to us about doing something with coffee. So Jem and I went to work, um, and we've, we've put this together, um, as the three of us. So Jem is doing our UX, our UI and our graphic design. I am Jack. I am doing strategy and community. Something that we wanted to share is really our core values as a team, because the values are what we feel defines really our direction and our path. And those for us are art, technology, and community. Because without one of those three, I don't know if a project can actually survive or accomplish, you know, a, a thriving ecosystem, so to speak. So, you know, with our art, we want to empower the new creative ecosystem. And the term ecosystem, it is, it is uh, intentional. Same with technology, you know, use it to empower this whole thing. And we believe highly in transparent communications. Um, as such, we, we communicate everything up front. There is going to be nothing left to guess. So it's, it's like, what is Cupco? It is the coffee universal profile community. And our objective here is to offer early participants a way to celebrate being up early with our art project. And we are doing this on Luxo. We are doing this using the LSP8 standard due to the, uh, the epicness that really is the LSP8 standard. And we are only supporting universal profiles. We do not believe in externally owned accounts being required or being needed anymore. We want to use the smart contract based digital identities that are our universal profiles. And our code is going to be on chain. And it's one of the first smart contracts that's being deployed on chain. And we hope that future builders will be able to use this as a reference point and really as a benefit to our entire ecosystem that we are building at the beginning. Without any further ado, I introduce the art of Cupco. This is the first look. No one's seen it yet. We are dropping this right here live for the people who are here. It's what is brewing. And we are dropping a collection of seven different coffee beans. And we thought it was just so much fun to make them pixel style as a kind of tip of the hat to the first NFTs ever created. We want to put these 100% on chain. And I can't say that we figured that part out yet, but we are making progress and doing everything possible to put this art directly on the Luxo blockchain. No IPFS links to some kind of JPEG somewhere else. These would be hopefully SVG files that are stored truly and completely on chain. And what that looks like is the entire contract, the entire, all of it on Luxo, our randomization function, everything. So we picked fun numbers on our beans. The brown ones obviously are the more common beans, if you will. The blue one is a tip of the hat to Ethereum. We will have 1,200 blue beans, which is a play on 120 million Ethereum. We will have 210 gold beans, which is a play on 21 million Bitcoin. And we will have 42 pink beans, which is a tip of the hat to Luxo. With that, I see Sage on the screen. My five minutes is up. Join us on Common Ground. Follow us on X. Check out our website and congrats to the first 420 who registered their up addresses on the Luxo blockchain early 2024. Let's go, Cup Go. Love it, Jack. Love the energy. Got my coffee here. Excited. Love the art. Love the alpha too, man. That's great. That's great stuff. Thanks, Sage. Thanks. I had a lot of fun. Of we just sent it. So. Appreciate everyone's time today and thanks for the, the space.
Love it. Okay. Next up here, um, let's check if Leadfoot's here again. I don't think he is. Uh, okay. So um, next up would be the man DeWolf too, but I also don't see DeWolf. I messaged the both of them this morning, um, and I'm not seeing them. So we keep pushing on. Who do we got next? We got um, Heisenberger. You want to uh, raise your hand here? We can get you up here. Jack, I'm going to throw you back down to the audience real quick. All right. Hello. Hello. Yep, I can hear you. Great. How's the mic? I got a new one. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, great. Let me know when you want the time to start. We can start. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the uh, few uh, minutes. I sent you a message a couple, a couple hours ago. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, token appro approvals. There's a lot of talk about, um, you know, revoking access to certain token contracts because um, you know, some protocols get hacked after a couple of months, couple of years, uh, and people forget about them. And so uh, people have suggested different ways to kind of mitigate this issue, right? The risk of uh, allowing a contract to have full access, you know, unlimited access um, until, you know, end of the world to your uh, assets on your wallet. And so, you know, one of them is, you know, monitoring and automatic revokes. So you would have a third party that would essentially listen to events on certain contracts and then have access to your wallet to revoke the access for you. The second one is Permit 2, which was developed by Uniswap. And so this is kind of like um, you use a middleman contract, you approve it, and then you use off-chain services to uh, kind of verify signature. And so this offers like you know, ways to have uh, time-bound approvals and such things, but this is still, you know, it, it's a workaround. It's the issue with Ethereum currently is that a lot of things that are being done, a lot of EIPs, they're kind of workarounds because the fundamentals don't allow for, you know, in innovative ways to fix these issues. And so Permit 2 is an example of that. And then the third one, we have Session Keys. I mean, Session Keys, I built that with Defolio. Some of you guys know me. Uh, won first place in Build Up 2. And so one of the features that they fully offered was session keys. So you can give someone uh, permission for a certain amount of time to do something on your wallet. But this is, this is also bad UX. I mean, for example, if I want to trade on Uniswap or PinkSwap, you know, if I want to trade there and I trade weekly or bi-weekly, and so there's something that uh, prompts me to trade uh, in an unusual manner, right? So. I buy something, next day I wake up and the price tanks and I have to kind of rebalance my portfolio. And so the day before I did give Uniswap or PinkSwap, you know, the permission to trade my tokens. And then that was time bound, right? It was only, it was a session for that period of time, let's say an hour. And so the next day the session key expired. And so I have to approve it again, right? Now with Luxo, we can of course make the two transactions one, but you're also paying extra gas at each time, right? You're paying more gas to approve and then do the trade or approve and do something with the contract. And so this is also not, you know, great. It's, you're spending unnecessary a lot of gas and uh, Luxo tokens to, um, you know, to basically have this uh, good UX. And so basically the solution that uh, kind of Fabian actually helped me out uh, he messaged me on Twitter, and so he uh, he you know said that maybe you could use Universal Receiver Delegate to you know fix the issue of approvals. And so basically, how Universal Receiver Delegate works is that let's say once your um, Universal Profile receives a token, it can perform certain actions. So, for example, you can say when I see when I receive like so tokens, um, send a percentage to this vault. That's my savings account, right? So. That's the idea of URD. And what you can do is instead of allowing a contract approval, infinite approval or time-based approval or any kind of approval, you don't give it at all. What you do is you simply develop the application, the Uniswap in this case, in a way that it uses the URD. So what happens is that instead of, again, 
given approvals, you simply send the token to the contract. Another thing that Luxo has, which again, you know, Ethereum does not have fundamentally, is that you can attach messages, your know, arbitrary data to token transfers. And so within the transfer, you can uh, pass in additional data like the token you want to trade with, the slippage, et cetera, all these different types of things that you want to do. It's essentially, you're just simply transferring the tokens with the data, and then the contracts takes the tokens and the data performs the necessary operations and then sends you back the tokens. And so this kind of eliminates the need for approvals. And so your tokens are safe. The only way that your tokens might be at risk is if you actually deposit your tokens into a protocol, like let's say staking or something like that. But in other cases, you know, this is a great uh, solution that looks like can offer to, to the issue of, you know, having infinite unlimited approvals on, on contracts. So yeah, th thank you guys for listening. Please. Fantastic there, Heisenberg. That was great timing too. That's awesome. I, I honestly, I never really considered like the idea that you connect your wallet to something. People just don't use the platform anymore, but the connection is still there and then it gets hacked and then bad things happen. That was, yeah. Okay. We got um, any questions in the chat for the man Heisenberg? see any oh there's a fear nice so up next um it was gonna be louie but i saw on twitter um, louie ruptured his achilles playing from soccer so he will not be here he said he's still moving around the hospitals and stuff so make sure you go give him your condolences for the time being um but he said he'll be looking to speak in the next um, so after Louis, we got um, the man Carlos uh, from Liquid um, up now, buddy. And then I just heard from DeWolf. He said he will be here in a second. DeWolf after Carlos. Uh, and then if anybody from the crowd wants to come up and give a quick impromptu five-minute chat, um, we can get that going too. Carlos is still here. Yeah, there he is. First of all, thanks for uh, for having me here. Um, I'll just take this opportunity to give uh, a quick overview of our plans for uh, for Liquid uh, for this first semester. Um, we also doing other things in parallel, as you guys know. We're building Luxo, we're building Drops in parallel. Uh, but I think I, it's important that we focus on Liquid for now because that's our main. Um, priority for this two couple of months that we're facing now. Uh, so as everybody knows, we we announced uh, a transition on um, on Liquid to, to a full uh, decentralized governance model. Eventually, that's the end goal. Um, we're also opening up our borders, so to speak, to, to node operators. Um, so to give a little status update on those two things, uh, the node operators, as everyone, as you guys probably saw on our Twitter, are set to launch this month. So I'm happy to announce that we'll probably reopen staking sometime, uh, if not the next week, the next, the week after at most. Uh, uh, we're already onboarding the first one. Uh, we have been talking to big players. That's kind of uh, something that's quite exciting to to let you guys know. I can't disclose any names. Uh, but we've been getting a lot of uh, reach out from established uh, institutional providers who are interested in onboarding Luxo. Uh, most of them are a bit reluctant still because they see the hype, they see the community talking, um, but they also see that Luxo is quite young as a blockchain itself. So they basically are have been talking to us, asking us questions, and uh, they're basically sitting on the sidelines. They want to see how uh we fare on this first round of node operators and if all goes well then they'll probably uh be onboarding as well with us and we're talking like big players like uh nine digit players that uh have like institutional investors behind them uh want to get some leaks working for them um so you guys will be able to hear more about this very soon on our twitter i can't disclose any names yet like i said uh, the next stage for us is also going to be the transition to a DAO. So 
the DAO itself is, you guys know, and Sage was also talking about quadratic funding before, so I'm sure he's familiar with the concept, uh, uh, is set to manage the network going forward. So as we have node operators, there will be sub several, several variables that will be subject to, uh, things like fees and like the alignment of incentives, uh, acceptance of new players, the rules to accept them. Like, so it's a whole lot of different technicalities that will need to be managed. And obviously Liquid will always be here to help manage those. Um, but for now, that's basically all I can reveal on the Liquid front. A um, couple of other things not as impactful that we're about to release. Uh, we've heard the community ask for a CSV export, especially our, our uh, community from the US. Uh, so we've implemented that. We should be releasing it this month as well. So basically, you'll be able to export all your actions within Liquid uh, to a CSV file, which you can then use for, you know, tax authorities or whoever asks you for it. Um, and we're also releasing a dedicated metrics page. That one is quite awesome. We've finished uh, most of the development. We're testing it. Uh, you guys will be able to see all kinds of metrics pertaining to Liquid both the staking pool and uh, our decks. And you'll also be able to see a few things about Luxo itself. So it's going to be quite like an interactive metrics page that is also set to be released uh, sometime this month, maybe beginning of next one, because like I said, the priority are the node operators. So uh, if we need to, we'll put the metrics on the back pocket for a couple more weeks. Uh, and yeah, and that's about it. Like, uh, you guys probably saw our roadmap. You saw that we have liquidity incentives coming. We saw you have like Deslix product integration. I can't reveal much more about it as of now. Uh, but I just want to say that the node operators are the first, uh, major milestone we have since launch, uh, which will dictate our path going forward. Um, and as usual, you can keep up with all of this through our social channels. Also want to thank Keys. They've been doing a great job with helping us, uh, especially the community parts. As you guys know, we're big on, on the tech side. Um, not so strong on the, the marketing part yet because, you know, we're, we're trying to do our best, but our focus has always been the, the security and integrity side. Uh, but the community has been amazing, so I can only be thankful for that. And, uh, and yeah, it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys here. And thanks, Sage, to you too. Thank you, Carlos. That was great. Under the five minutes, too. Everybody hitting the under on the five minutes is great. Um, always great to hear from you, Carlos. It looks like there might be some random questions uh, in the chat if you feel like answering any of those, too, um, while you look at those. In the meantime, we have Leadfoot here, too, uh, and DeWope is here. So the two that we skipped earlier both ended up showing up. So I'll throw uh, DeWope up on the stage as soon as Carlos. Um, either decides to answer those questions or is, is good. Yeah, I can go through this. I mean, even if it's to say that I can't disclose it or not, but at least you guys will not be left uh, unanswered. So let me take a quick look here. Stake and then learn. I'll be validating. Okay, obviously, I can't disclose. Like, uh, I know you guys are curious. I would be in your place too, who these uh, players are. Um, the the good part about it and the reason why I wanted to tell you guys is because Luxo is clearly on their radar, like uh, for some time now. So uh, let me see. Drops is coming with the deck. So no, Drops, just to clarify, guys, um, and, and you will see this rebrand re pretty soon. Uh, Liquid itself is going to be the DeFi hub for all we do. So... If, and I'm not saying we will do, but if we do a DEX, that would be probably as part of Liquid. Um, I mean, we already have a DEX there. We just don't let anyone else create liquidity pools for security reasons uh, yet or, or not. Uh, it's just for the Licks as Licks pair. But Drops is going to be an infrastructure provider. So Drops, uh, as we said in our presentation at uh, the Meetup 2, uh, we'll be providing services such as blockchain indexing, RPC nodes, etc., to to big players, to to let's say uh, established companies that want to move into Luxo. So they they will need technical um, support, and that's kind of where we're what we're aiming to do with Drops. Because I mean, we've been releasing all these things under the Drops hood. It makes sense that we continue the brand uh, and help you know grow the Luxo ecosystem. However, we can do. Um, what is the matrix? 
Well, the metrics are basically anything that you are curious about regarding liquid uh, in Luxo in this case. So you'll be able to see uh, each re each 12 hour reward distribution. So people don't ask constantly if the rewards were issued or not. You'll be able to see the provenance of the rewards themselves. Um, things like, for example, did it come from at how many rewards came from attestations, proposals, the sync committee. Uh, you'll be able to see a TVL charts, unique depositors, SLIX uh, holder leatherboard. Uh, you'll be able to see a dilation uh, chart, validator chart. Um, what else? For luck, so you'll be able to see the inflation rate chart, staking APR, burn licks, uh, node and validator chart again. So a whole, a lot, uh, the block reward as well. A lot of things, a lot of things. So basically everything that you might be curious about, we'll have it there. If we don't, and you mention it to us, we'll probably add it uh, later on. Um, let me see. Okay, I see Eth is asking if Antonio is still sleeping. I don't know. Like you guys know here it drops. Uh, we're not about uh, schedules. We're about goals, like you guys personally know. But I'll make sure to relay that message to him. Eth, I'm sure he misses you. So let me see. Is that consideration? Uh, no, Heisenberg. When I say DEX, I mean like uh, in the traditional uh, sense. So the, the the other DEX, we already have it. It's the one that you can already use. You just go to liquid.io and you have it there. But it's a DEX for our LST token. So it's basically just to allow people to unstake in an emergency situation uh, in a quicker way. Or like someone is doing, we've been keeping our eyes on, uh, taking advantage of the leverage opportunities. I know that uh, we have at least one bot that someone built who has been using it, making it like a steady profit, not a big one, but uh, but the volume is there. We have like consistently 20 to 30K dollars a week in volume. So someone's using it. Um, reach out to a major shareholder. Yeah, Axel. Uh, Axel Axolotl, we're always open to 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 discuss with the community. Um, like even recently, yesterday I spoke to Tanto, a pretty chill guy who also spoke here today. So I'm I'm all eager to 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 meet more people in the Luxo community. Reach out to us. Uh, you can send me a DM. You can send me an email. Uh, you can find me on Telegram, Discord. Uh, how secure is my leaks in Liquid? Well, I would say Ragnar, it's fairly secure. Again, uh, I'm probably not the best person you should ask. Like. Uh, I'm biased. I'm always going to say it's safe, but I never do nothing that's not anything that's not like 100% sure for me. So I have the level of confidence to to use it. And I also have quite a big stake there too um, myself. What is the process on unstaking? Yeah, you can unstake both ways. You can unstake uh, the normal way. So you just withdraw your licks, which will cause uh, a validator removal on the Luxo blockchain. Or you can go through the DEX and just unstake instantly. And you'll be subject to uh, an amount of slippage depending on how how many how much leaks you're withdrawing. So that's more like for emergencies if if uh, if you need them. Uh, yeah, and that's it. All right. Again, thanks, guys. Thanks, Sage. And uh, looking forward to hearing the next ones. Take care. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, see you later, man. We got Leadfoot down here. Where'd he go? I just saw him. Where'd he go? Send him a message real quick. I know DeWolf is still here, though, so let's get DeWolf up here. I will send you back. Oh. Okay, you're good. DeWolf. Hello, how are you? So, hello, guys. guys. Uh, this is uh, DeWolf uh, from uh, the Dube uh, Collection. Um, we, yeah, we had the, the, the collection that I think, um, yeah, I think everyone knows us a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So I've uh, been around for quite a while and the idea kind of like changed a lot. And sure, we wanted to look like a card game, but we were able to like, kind of like grow into like, um, meet big, bigger player. So now, I mean, I'm just going to go right straight into it. Now we kind of want to do, uh, what we call kind of like a social MMO. Uh, I call it the MMO TPG, but I mean, it's just a random name, really. Uh, it's more like a social MMO closer to, to Second Life, uh, than closer to Second Life to, than, uh, I would say that the World of Warcraft. Uh, the idea is essentially, um, 
I want kind of like, I wanted to kind of create something that would, in in a sense, replace. I mean, it would be kind of like a, a Telegram, Discord, or any social media that you use, a Twitter or whatever companion, right? What if you could have like in one one of your monitor, for example, or on your phone, um, this game that's like a, a kind of like an MMO, uh, like kind of like cartoon character style, uh, cell shading and all that, and. On the other screen, for example, on your, on your main monitor, on your laptop, you could have like your uh, Telegram, your Discord, Twitter, and you could kind of like interact with, uh, with uh, both of these things uh, in a sense that like, uh, let's say you're for friends and you, you're talking about tokens and uh, crypto or whatever, and you're, you're inside the game. And but you wanna, what do you have to do at that point? You have to get onto a DEX, load the wallet, do this, do that, do all the steps to to trade or to send tokens to a friend within the, while you're playing that game, when you're interacting within the, the game by doing mini games or, or just talking around or just walking around. Uh, instead of doing all that, what if you could just do a lot inside the game itself? Uh, what if you could just like kind of like trade, send tokens, show your NFT, watch charts, uh, watch uh, a live or a Twitter talks, a Twitter space or, or kind of like do all these interactions that we do on a day-to-day basis in crypto within the game. So in a sense that we are kind of like companion MMO, if that makes sense, uh, we are companion to like to, 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 to your crypto experience. I do want to make it uh, uh, um, uh, player friendly in the sense that I don't want to like to have the crypto features to be like on the forefront. That's how we can see all that. This is great on the technical side, but I do want people that don't know anything about crypto uh, from web to be able to jump in and um, start right away, like interacting with people in other in, in other communities. Because yes, you could have like uh, a crypto area that would be reserved for like crypto activities, trading, uh, talking about NFTs or watching space. But you could as well have uh, other spaces, uh, these smaller towns, to get into like a different type of activities that you do online, whether it's gaming. Or maybe you don't want to talk about series. It could be like a town where yeah. all people are there just talk about different shows they watch or they're like movie nerds. Yeah. Uh, you could have another town that would be like maybe um, focused on gaming side, uh, mm-hmm. gaming oriented um, um, mm-hmm. online. And maybe that's like a, a, a crypto town, right? Mm-hmm. And like you, everything uh, that happens there is related to, to, to crypto. And in that sense, the stores will be would be essentially uh, represent what the town is uh, the main uh, focus on the town. Um, the activities I could do inside the town were so like reflect that. That would be essentially the idea uh, behind the, the, the game itself. Um, of course, you could own like uh, your own uh, like small house. Um, you, could, you can take part to that and you can invite your friends and be your, your, your friend. You, you want to talk uh, about the last thing that happened in crypto. You can just open a group, uh, kind of like a group call within the game. I mean, yeah, you can just speak while moving your character around. And that's what I want to do. I think that's something that's never been done yet. It's doing something that is an MMO that's not just focused on crypto itself. And also, that's an MMO that's more really wrong the social aspect of just while well, integrating all these web features and all these. Um, Kind of these activities that we do online that are just a little bit disconnected, I feel like. So, yeah, I want to ask a little bit. Uh, just uh, we are, you're now really bringing a proof of concept uh, that will be playable by uh, all others uh, by the end of the month, I think. That's the time that we gave ourselves. Um, in that game, you should be able to like walk around with your 3D character, um, do a little bit of activity, create an account, uh, connect to your wallet on Luxor. We want to use the, US, the, the Unreal Engine um, integration as much as possible. Uh, that's, that's something that, uh, that's a uh, big focus on the part for us. Um, you should be able to see your inventory, you should have NFT in, in your inventory. You can showcase your NFT to like a friend. Uh, that's the main idea behind the, the proof concept we're working on. We want to do that because I feel like, yeah, we've talked a lot, but we never really showed anything. So that's something we, right now, we're like, really focused on. That and the communication side. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the yeah. Uh, sorry, that's all. Nice, love to hear it. Glad you could make it. Um, 
hopefully it wasn't too last minute for you. Uh, yeah, this way. Thanks. Nice. I don't think um, any comments or questions or anything. So we'll go ahead and get our last uh, planned guest here, Leadfoot, from up here. Thanks again to Wope. I'm going to toss it down to the audience. Forward to hear from you again. Leadfoot. Hello. What's up, buddy? How are you? Uh, so I am the founder of Upturn. Upturn is a LST7 token generator. Uh, our infrastructure is being built out to support loyalty tokens. For example, if you go to a coffee shop and you buy a coffee, you receive a stamp on a card. We're building that for creators, influencers, uh, artists, DJs, whatever you name it, anyone in the creative industry. Um, so people who engage on social media, buy their digital assets in the form of merchandise and tickets, et cetera, et cetera, share their music, share their artwork, attend shows, all these kinds of interactions can get rewarded with a loyalty token. So that's what our infrastructure is. Um, we have on Upturn.live, Upturn operating system. We have a LSP7 token generator where you can select the supply, how many decimals, between zero and 18, um, the name of it, kick off, but uh, whether it's burnable, mintable, um, a creator fee, which is like a royalty and, uh, brand fees on transactions. So you can completely customize and edit your token. Also, you can edit your token post deployment, um, which is super, super cool. Now to use Upturn OS, you need to have a mint pass. So you may have seen the mint passes being sold recently on universal page. Uh, we told about a hundred, they went super, super fast. So there's a lot of people who missed out. Um, but we have something in store for you over the next little while. If you stay tuned, um, Sage knows what I'm talking about and a few of you in the crowd probably do as well. So to keep your eyes open, you're going to have another opportunity. Um, this will be the tier two pass. These are the same perks right now as anything that's being released. Um, that's going to change in the future. We're going to have like a tier system. Um, so those of you who have a Genesis drop from last week, and those of you, of you who have a testnet drop, uh, the OG. So congratulations. If you have any of those, um, the testnet drop is going to come very, very shortly. Keep working on that one. Um, probably I'd say like around mid February. I'll, I'll deploy those and then get them all out to you once I've collected all your mainnet universal profile, uh, profiles. So if you haven't followed us, go to tokens and as well, LSP, um, on Twitter, or you can actually go to the upturn common ground, uh, where the link is, and they tell me I have to put up the link for me because I'm on my phone, but, uh, yeah, maybe in the chat. So thank you. That is. All I have to say. I saw that Presto wanted to say something. Yes, there he is. Presto. Yo, yo. Just wanted to uh, stop in. I seen that Keys was hosting a nice, uh, nice channel and, uh, wanted to come and say what's up to everybody. This is really chill. Shout out to Sage. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to Sage. And I think Sage is back. Sage, you can see and hear us again. Uh, yeah, I can see and hear you. Perfect. Um, just restarted the whole uh, common ground page instead of just leaving the chat. So hopefully we're good to go. Presto, what's up? Appreciate you saying hello. This is pretty chill. The whales are pretty chill. Great to see. For sure. I uh, love to see all the community support and Twitter is literally full of whales. So it's really easy to recognize who's on Luxo now. And I think the movement's pretty sick. So uh, this pink wave starting and chill whales loves to support everybody building on Luxo as well. So if you're providing value, you know, and you're participating in the network, reach out to me or any of anybody else in the team and uh, we could get something going. Great up. Sounds good, man. Um, also just wanted to say this too, because I know everybody's like spilling a little spill. Um, we aren't going to promise any utilities. I keep hearing people asking what's next, what's next. Um, we're gonna do dope shit in the background and we're gonna vibe out at the same time. So Hopefully everybody likes that mentality and uh, we could just ride this pink Luxo wave. I would argue that vibes are utility. 
<laughs> Agreed. Deeply. Cool. All right. Well, uh, um, if, again, if anyone in the crowd wants to come up, great. If not, we're going to wrap this thing up here. We're going on about an hour. I want to try to keep um, this thing pretty short. Um, so it seemed like the chat was saying, well, let's do weekly. So we'll shoot for weekly. Um, we'll stick to Wednesdays, but I'll probably try to do a later time next week. Um, maybe we can get some of the Platys guys on here. Um, maybe Zen or some of the canvas land people can come on too. So we'll try to mix up the time zones, get a little different group in, uh, but make sure to follow the keys, Twitter, join the common ground as you all are already here. Um, follow the Pink Pill Productions YouTube. We'll keep all the information updated there. And then we're going to post the recording of this too on our YouTube. And in that, uh, the description, I'll add the link to our Notion page for the Lightning Talks, which will have um, links to all the people's things that talked uh, to their collections, to anything they referenced. And it'll also uh, just keep information for when the next ones are. Um, so appreciate all of you coming. Uh, I appreciate uh, all the speakers that came up today and I look forward to the next one.